All right, what's up, world? This is Raul with Live Loud. So I'm coming at you guys again with Say It Loud, another interview with people who are out there creating some magical stories. And the thing that I've been enjoying so much about this journey is that all the amazing people that I've gotten to meet all around the world, from, from New York to Brazil to India to Spain to all this stuff, I really have this opportunity to get to share their story. As a storyteller, being that we're in quarantine right now is such an honor and it's opened up this, this blessing to be able to connect with people and share their story in a whole nother light, not just what they do, but who they are. So today I have my guest, Ryan, who I had met not that long ago. So we met from uh, a dear friend of mine, Yvette. One of the things that I share with her is that I built an awesome community around the world. But when I come back to New York, I feel disconnected. I feel detached. I long for intimacy and brotherhood and sisterhood. And so she's like, yo, I got this solid guy that you want to meet. One of the first three things are, he's a really cool guy. He's a lot of fun and he loves Chick-fil-A. So, <laughs> shout out to Chick-fil-A, first of all, yes. for putting this on the map, because yes. I'm like, all right, cool, we clearly know where we're going to meet, Chick-fil-A, <laughs> and then we go from here. So, Ryan, thank you so much for, for jumping on the call, man. Oh, man, absolutely, bro. It's a privilege, privilege. Yeah, so aside from good energy, please share with us, what, what do you do? Who are you? Yeah, man. Uh, my name's Ryan. Uh, I was born and raised in New York. I've been in New York uh, pretty much my entire life outside of a four-year stint in Seattle. And uh, I'm actually one of the uh, location pastors for a church in New York City called C3 NYC. Uh, we've got five locations around the city. Um, and so we've got lead pastors and then each location has a pastor of that location. And so uh, I actually get the privilege of pastoring the Queens location, uh, which is pretty, uh, pretty ironic since this is where I was uh, pretty much raised. So, so yeah, but I've been doing that for about almost two years. Yeah, it's an amazing too. I got to, I've gotten the chance when in between travels, when I would come back to New York, I've gotten the chance to pop into the church and just experience Ryan firsthand. And what's really amazing is that sitting there in Chick-fil-A, having a conversation with you, a very real conversation, was yeah. the same way I experienced you as a pastor was the same way as experience you being with everybody, with your people, your community. So it's really refreshing to see how consistent you stand behind that. And I know that stuff doesn't just happen overnight. It takes from really developing who we are. Yeah. And so that, that was a really awesome experience. Yeah. I remember sitting in front of you and I was sharing who I was. Yeah. And I, I felt like I was dropping the F-bomb like a lot of times. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, you know, I went to the church. I was like, I went to the church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I usually try to, um, I try to be as vague as possible when people ask me what I do. Um, I try to say, oh, you know, I've, I, I do public speaking or, I just kind of work with people. Try, try to make it as generic as possible because I found that when I mentioned the pastor word or anything involved in church, uh, people start thinking that they need to, you know, watch their language around me and stuff. And, and you know, you obviously appreciate the sentiment, but um, I think uh, I think the cool thing about uh, just even in interactions with people, I enjoy when people uh, are themselves around me. I don't, I don't want people to. Um, watch their mouths, you know what I mean? Or not curse because they're around the pastor. I don't think that that's the way that Jesus lived. Um, I don't think Jesus asked people to behave better around him. Uh, I just think he went to people who are authentically themselves. And so, um, yeah, but it's it's funny because I, you know, I, when you asked me, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna tell him he's gonna think, you know, I don't, I don't want him to think, you know, he has to like watch the way he talks around me. So, no, I'm pretty uh, sure yeah. I, threw, I threw a couple of more out there after that. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. I, uh, I I on occasion slip up if I'm in uh, in the heat of competition. So we, yeah. you know, it, it happens. Well, um, well, the cool thing, actually, as of lately, I think for the last seven months, man, I've been making it a habit not to curse at all, just because yeah. how we interact with ourselves, like our thoughts are, sure. uh, we think in language, right? That's and our thoughts dictate so much about how we emotionally carry ourselves. So if I'm distributing a lot of energy with these words that don't really serve me or not really about my progression. Yeah. I've been watching my words, watching my thoughts, and uh, and it's been really powerful. I'm noticing how much people curse now, even more now. Yeah. As much. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and I mean, words are powerful, but I also think uh, a lot more than your words. It's your heart behind your words, and mm -hmm. so uh, I can say "Have a great day," but my heart behind saying it and how I really feel when I say it 
it's the furthest thing than what I'm actually saying. So um, yeah, I think it's a lot more about the heart behind what we're saying instead of how, the words that we're actually using. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I, uh, you know, I was, man, I, I never really thought I was going to be doing ministry or pastoring or anything like that. And uh, I was actually teaching middle school um, for two years prior to, to being on staff at the church. And, um, you know, I'd been attending church and actually that four year stint in Seattle, I was doing an internship program for a church out there. And uh, that was my first kind of felt called the ministry. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just graduated college. Um, but that was, gosh, I guess 2011 when I really felt like, man, this is something that I think I'm, I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until 20, gosh, 18 until it actually happened. So a seven year gap. Um, but yeah, I think it was, uh, I think, I think life is just, um, life is full of different seasons. You know, I, I, I think um, some seasons are, I think all seasons are beneficial. Um, not all seasons are necessarily enjoyable. Um, but I think, you know, for a while I've been wondering when the season was going to come, when I actually stepped into uh, maybe ministry full time. And um, I think, I think that any time before 2018 would have been the wrong. And so I, I trust that God's timing is always perfect in those things. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been the most beautiful struggle of my entire life. <laughs> the hardest thing I've done, but uh, the most rewarding thing I've done at the same time. How, what was the time or was this a gradual occurrence or what was that moment that you decided, okay, this is, this is the point where I'm going to commit to this journey. What was occurring for you that that was the case? Or was it something way before that option was even Oh, oh gosh, man. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, when I first ever had the thought of like going into ministry at any point in time, I was working at Applebee's uh, in Seattle randomly. I was there opening up one morning and um, I had just, I had been really praying and just asking God, like, God, what, what am I supposed to be doing? You know what I mean? I know that I'm out here, but big picture, what is it that you kind of called me to? And uh, I remember I walked in that morning and this girl, one of my coworkers came up and uh, she was like, oh, hey, you're the pastor, right? And like when she said it, something just kind of clicked because I'd never had that thought before. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was saying it as a joke, but little did she know that she was kind of like confirming what um, what I was going to be doing for the rest of my life. But yeah, that was, that was probably 2011. Um, and then when I moved back to New York in 2014, Mm -hmm. um, I actually was going to a church for a short period of time and then ended up leaving church. Um, just had bad experience, a lot of things that had just kind of hurt me. Um, and so I just kind of ran away from it. Um, but I think 20, April 2016 um, was when I like kind of gave up. I was in a really toxic relationship. Uh, it just wasn't healthy. I wasn't healthy. Um, and you know, hurt people hurt people. So it's like, I just, I, I wasn't. Um, in the right headspace. And so um, I was just like, man, I just need to get back to what I know has always kept me grounded, um, which has been my church community. And so April, 2016 was when I was like, all right, I'm, I'm back. And it's gonna be a bit of a struggle to kind of get back into the rhythm of things. But like, I, I know that I cannot be apart from church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you stepped away from this, this wasn't so much your disbelief in that. It was it just kind of your own struggle and you were just so consumed with that or? Oh yeah. Yeah, I was just moments that you felt um, unenrolled in in your faith. You know, did you have moments where you're just like, do I question this? Do I doubt this? Or what was that like for you? Sure. Yeah. No. I mean, I. I mean, listen. Anybody who's ever been in church um, is still in church. Is not in church. Has ever been in a church service? Like everybody. Uh, at some point questions themselves. Man, do I really, do I really believe this? Like, this is crazy. Like, do I really believe that there's a God who created all this just to have a relationship? Do I really believe um, that this guy 2000 years ago rose from the dead? Like, do I really believe these things? Um, I think, I think there's always going to be room for doubt in a space that requires faith. So because you're trusting um, and, and faith is the, the, the hoping um, of, of things that aren't seen so to not see it um it's always going to require faith but anytime that you are operating in a mode of faith there's always going to be room for doubt uh otherwise it's not really faith so um i think you you always doubt but doubt doubting god wasn't my reason for leaving um my hurt 
emotionally, spiritually, just relationally, there were a lot of things that hurt me within the church, which caused me to run, um, which is silly because I knew that running wasn't going to help anything, but I was just like, let me do this anyway. And so, I, yeah, I, I've found that there's, you deal with two types of pain. You either deal with the pain of healing um, or the pain of not healing. And so for that period of time, that almost year long period, I just chose to deal with the pain of, of not healing. And um, it is exponentially more painful than the pain of healing, believe me. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I think I find a lot of people, not just in faith, but in relationships with themselves, a lot of times we avoid the therapeutic side of it, of what we need to do to grow, to heal, to learn, to expand, uh, because it's easier easier being comfortable. Sure. But what we don't get is that that comfort of neglecting that side of us and just being on automatic or subscribing right. to things that are toxic, the longevity of that impact is so much grand, like so much yeah. bigger and so much more powerful that it does so much more damage than we actually, than we would experience if we actually faced ourselves and explored what that healing would be like for us. And yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I think, I think even when you talk about um, just that relationship with self, uh, I think that delves into a lot of this self care that people talk about. I think, um, especially in the last five years, there's been an overwhelming um, gravitation towards mental health and um, removing toxic uh, circumstances, people, uh, even substances. Uh, and so people have gotten really, really fixated on self-care. Uh, mm -hmm. I talked to so many people who are like taking mental health days um, and, and, and rightfully so. Um, but I think that for as much as there is a, uh, maybe an awareness or an advocation for self-care, um, I, I have seen that that advocation um, usually the, usually leans much further uh, towards women than it does men. And so I still think that there's a stigma uh, with men as it pertains to self-care. Um, and again, this isn't painting with a broad brush, like that's not everybody, but I, I have found that um, for, you know, you, you wanna make it, um, you know, stereotypes or societal norms or whatever you want to attribute that to, um, men are definitely not at the forefront of, hey, let's take care of ourselves. Let's make sure that we're okay mentally. Let's make sure, we're, we're down to make sure that we're okay physically so that we look good, but as it pertains to our emotional health or spiritual health or mental health, it's the thing that we kind of shy away from. And I think a lot of that is just not understanding um, how truly broken we, we are. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so how would you relate or what would you suggest? What do you talk about with people when they're out doing their self-care, mm -hmm. but they self-care on the stuff that's outside of them? Shit. Right? Which is a step. It's a step, right? We remove the, the toxic interactions that we have. Yeah. But what we forget is that the common denominator is ourselves. And right. wherever we go, there we show up, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, yes. And I think I, I think it's interesting because it, because I've seen, I've seen both sides of it. So I've seen the side where it's, hey, you know what? I removed the toxic people. I removed the toxic relationships. I removed all of these things, but it still doesn't answer the question of what's what's going on inside. Like there's residual effects from those toxic encounters and from those toxic relationships. But us alone, like we're, there's so much complexity to one individual like if you think about just even biologically there's so much complexity but when you start talking about the mind and emotions and how many things factor like think about right now the fact that the way you were raised the uh, political views the um, family values all of these things have been shaping and, and growing and impacting us on a daily basis and so um, yeah you can cut all those other things external things out but when it comes down to it it's like yes there's still something inside of you that you need to deal with now on the other side of that i've seen it where um, a lot of it is very very much let me just tie up my bootstraps let me just make you know i'm gonna work on my mental health and 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 you and i have talked about this before but i i think in the grand scheme of things when we look at humanity as a whole are, are we yes i think there's power in the mind but i i also think that when we get to the actual core of our being, 
I think that if we were to uncover, if we took all of the thoughts that we had, if we took all of the, and, and I'm not just talking about the thoughts that we put on paper. I'm not talking about the thoughts that we air on social media. I'm talking about the thoughts that you have that nobody knows about, the things that you ponder, the way that your mind works, the thoughts that you have towards people, the thoughts that you have towards yourself and certain things. All of the things that are both spoken and unspoken, um, I think that the weight of that and healing that is almost impossible um, to do on our own. And so um, I think that that's where you see a lot of people looking for, well, is it yoga, is it meditation, is it spirituality? The, the one that everybody's looking for something to cure uh, the storm that kind of rages within us. Um, and so what that is for people, I think that's the question that a lot of us are really searching for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. That, that really stands out so much. You know, one of the reasons why I, two things that come to mind, one of the reasons why I really admire you is because how you show up is how you show up. It's still you, it's still Ryan, right? So like I was saying before, whether you're, where we're speaking at Chick-fil-A or whether you're on stage, I still experience you the same way. And what's awesome is that I don't feel that you sway away from who you are in how you represent yourself, how you show yourself, even on social media with your lady and the, the yeah. playfulness or yeah. even when you guys were doing the the little, the head the switch. Oh, the head, yeah, the face yeah. and instead just like, who's, who's grumpier and yeah. you, it. you know, oh, it's so cool because there's so many times that I think I myself, uh, I take responsibility for how I show up with that stuff because I have a lot of things that I encounter on my side sure. and my doubts and my questions, am I supposed to be doing this? Why are more people paying attention to the good in the world? Why is the next scroll of something destructive getting thousands of millions of likes and this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope we so all that dialogue that goes into our to, into my head, um, it's, it's awesome that I see you own it and you be with it. So one of the things that I think I love about our the, the, the few times that we've connected, but in those times that we speak about faith, we speak about connection towards not just this individualistic journey of sure. healing, because it's not, neither of us believe it's not. We might look at it differently or, sure. or overlap in some some type of concept yeah. in how we view it or we relate to it. But yeah, it's not this solo journey, right? Yeah. This self-care thing means like I as an independent independent from everything else when really it's uh, what I associate with it is our connection to something much bigger. Yes. Our, our relationship to the universe, God, son, whatever you might call it. And one of the reasons why I have you on because you have your method of doing it that's shared yeah. Christianity and stuff. Yeah. But um, how is your relationship with that support you in your self care? Gosh, I, you know, when it comes to self care, I think one of the biggest things about self-care is understanding that you can't fully care for yourself. Um, and I think so often the idea of self-care is, all right, well, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna isolate myself and I'm, and I'm for that. Like, I'll be the first person to tell you the way that I recharge is being away from people. Like, give me like 48 hours, not around another human and I'm like ready to go, geared up, charged up. I'm like, man, okay, I'm, I'm good. So I think that there are small pockets of isolation. I, th I think those seasons are important, but I also know that we're not meant to live life alone. We're communal beings, we're created for community. And so even when you look at people um, who consider themselves out outcasts, what usually ends up happening, they start gravitating toward other people who are outcasts. Because even in our outcasting or being outcast from society in that sense, we still desire community so we band together with other people who have related to our experience so to me there's in everything that we do any social interaction from uh you know as a young child to an adult we're all looking for community um and i think that's a huge part of self-care is understanding that hey i cannot care for myself and get fully healthy on my own but also i so obviously community would be different depending on the medium that you're talking about for me it's our church community so even right now i know that man was not created to be alone uh, and i believe that with the core of my being but what do we do even now in a season where there's isolation when we're quarantined you know what i mean like, so the the struggle that i'm when i'm having meetings with people on facetime and stuff and the thing that we're talking about is i just feel so alone right now um and so i think i think community and a healthy community that is 
committed to seeing your growth that is running in the same direction as you, as you um, is probably the one of the greatest factors in you achieving the self-care that you actually want. So for me, I, you know, I, I just, I need to be around people who are going to speak into my life, pray with me, and honestly, just laugh with. Like, I think so often people are like, oh, I've got to have self-care. I'm, oh, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just really self-caring right now. So I'm just like, really? And I'm like, you know what would actually help your self-care is if you just laughed. Like, if you just like watched a show that made you laugh and like joked around with friends, I'd probably heal you a lot faster than trying to be serious and, and, and um, you know, existential about everything. So. Brother, you know how many times I have to remind myself of that because I get so mission based on, okay, I'm going to impact the world. This is what I'm creating. This is how I want to heal people. This is how I want to support. I want to create awareness. I want to touch people's hearts. Yeah. And then every so often I pause and just like, but dang, I want to have fun while I'm doing it. You know, yeah. so how do I create that? And it lightens me up just to be yeah. able to do that because it's not such a serious obstacle that I need to overcome, but it's something that it could be shared, it could be explored, it could be communal, it could be laughter, it could be joy. Yeah. So on that message, man, these a lot, there's a lot of people that are home that are wondering about their self-care. They're yeah. wondering what they could do with themselves uh, in this time. They're feeling disconnected, they're feeling lonely. Yeah. What would you suggest for the people watching this? What would you say this opportunity can support them in creating? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I, so the one thing that I would say is I think there needs to be a bit of a perspective shift because I'll be the first person to tell you, like I went out yesterday to go to the store um, and I, I felt like Tim Robbins and Shawshank Redemption. I was like, oh my gosh, I am free. Like I, I'm not in my apartment. I don't have to, I had gloves on, of course. And you know, I'm being mindful of what I'm touching and how far I'm staying away from people, but just to feel the sun felt amazing. And so, um, you know, you know, I think, the one thing I'd say is if you can do it in a safe way, like just maybe take a walk around your block, just being outdoors will help. Um, but what I've actually found interesting is that we're in a time right now where everything is, is kind of morbid in its outlook. So it's every year we're hearing about the increased infection rate and death toll and economic hit and the stock and all of these things. And there's so many negative things. And I understand that we need to share information but I think what that has done is clouded our ability to see that we have something right now that probably will never happen again in human history where we are literally confined to our homes and are forced to be alone with ourselves and I think that in an age of social media I think that in an age of technology where everything is accessible um, I think a lot of us have just forgotten how to be with ourselves like i think people are going stir crazy because we don't really know how to be alone anymore and so um i know for myself i've, I've signed up for a few classes online that are free because i'm like hey i'm just gonna take it like when am i gonna be home alone this much like when when are me and my wife gonna be able to have this much time together you know what i mean when am i gonna be able to sit down and not have to commute and not have to do all of these other things and not get caught up and drawn out like this is a time to really take care of myself so i'm going to try to read a book more i'm going to try to um take a class i'm going to try to learn more master classes having a two for one special right now learn how to make a movie learn how to act learn how to cook mexican food learn how to you know what i mean like there's so i, I think people are looking at it so much of oh my gosh i'm so confined but if we can switch that to Hey, we're not on the def defensive here, but we're actually on the offensive. We, we get to make the most of this time. Um, I, you know, I, I think that that's, that's what we, our approach has to be. Um, but also take care, you know, take advantage of technology. You know, our church is doing online dinner parties. Uh, every Wednesday yeah, we meet up yeah. um, in homes across the city. We can't do that right now, but it doesn't stop us from having communities. So, you know, last week we had 40 people on a Zoom call all talking about the message from Sunday. Use FaceTime, use technology, use a Zoom call. Like this is, can you imagine if this had been the 70s and we had been quarantined like this, we'd be going out of our minds because we wouldn't have <laughs> connect. But man, you know, use that opportunity to connect. Maybe you're home with a, with a, a family member that things have been a bit rocky use this intentional time together to hammer out the things that are going on. 
use this time to heal, spend time with your kids, like whatever that looks like. Yeah, I completely agree, man. This is this is a such a perfect opportunity for those of us that have been curious about, I think everybody that's been curious about exploring something, but we had the excuse that we don't have enough time, we don't have enough resources, there I'm too busy with X, Y, and Z. And this is opportunity to, okay, let's allow ourselves to be curious right now. What are we curious about and how can we dive into that? And yeah. the side of it that I really love of what you're sharing that is a great message for me is what is my community up to? How do I interact and connect with them, be a service to them and allow other people to be a service to me as well? Thank you so much, brother. Is there any other message or anything that you feel compelled that you want to share? I think this has put life um, uh, really under the microscope for a lot of people. Yeah. And um, I, I think the beautiful thing, especially about our church, is that we have people. Um, we have a girl that's been coming to one of our dinner parties. She's been coming to our church for probably over a year now. And she still doesn't know what she believes about God. She doesn't know what she believes about. She's like, hey, I don't really know what I believe. And I'm like, hey, that's cool. Like, I'm just glad you're here. Um, but if I had like one opportunity to broadcast a message to any person on the planet right now, um, it would be that despite our doubts, despite our uh, skepticism, despite our bitterness or anger or anything that we feel, um, we are so loved by God that it cannot even be measured um, here on earth. And I think, um, I think a lot, I think if people knew how much they were loved by God, um, they would be so drawn to him. So uh, for anybody that's listening, um, I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you've walked through. I don't know what your experience has been in church. I don't know what your experience has been in family. You might've lived an entire life filled with pain and hurt and abandonment. And I'm so sorry that that has happened, but please do not allow those things to trick you into thinking that you are not loved, valued, and cherished by God. Um, and uh, man, it's, it's love that's gonna change us. It's love that's gonna get us through. Thank you so much for that, man. That was beautiful. Is there, where can people find you or the church or how can people that are curious go on the easiest website in the world, c3.nyc. You can go there, you can get introduced to uh, online services. We have them from 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Sunday, every hour on the hour online. Um, we've got uh, online dinner parties. We've got a ton of cool resources. Um, if you're here and you're a parent, you have kids, we've got kids programs at four o'clock every day. Um, we've got morning yoga for kids as well. And so c3.nyc, um, you can check out everything from there. Yeah, c3.nyc. I'm Again, I'm a testament to that, to showing up. It's, it's not about how a lot of people associate it, that they need to show up and align to what's going on but it's really such an awesome place where you get met at where you're at it's and that's perfect yeah. where you are you know that's such a beautiful thing ryan thank you again so much for dropping your knowledge again anyone who's listening if you guys feel called please connect explore check it out allow your curiosity to kind of tune in because i, I promise you what you're going to get is humanity at its riches and a faith that's just beyond beyond words man so thank you again for being who you are, yeah, brother. Absolutely. Uh, I love you, bro. As soon as, as soon as we're out of this thing, we're going back to Chick-fil-A. There you go, man. <laughs> again, hashtag Chick-fil-A. Yeah, thank exactly. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you so much. And Yeah, absolutely. Man. Love you, bro. Yeah, and if you want to check out a, uh, a dinner party, let me know. Absolutely. All right. All right. Peace out, guys.